All right, welcome to the Pro Tools Tips videos from Lilac Writer. And this time I'm going to talk about multi track drums. We're using multi track drum loops in a project. I'm going to start with a verse section of multi track drums where the drums are broken out, as you can see here, um, with the hi hat uh, left and right overheads. I've got different parts of the snare as well as the toms. Now these are full of live multi-track drums in a four bar loops. To get started, if you've got a project that doesn't have any drum tracks on it, you can just drag these to the project area. And it also, if there's an original file tempo, it will say import original uh, tempo from file. We'll do that. Just like that, our first set of drums creates all the tracks, which is really kind of nice. The thing that we're going to need to do here then is name these tracks because these, these track names are based on the file name. We've got a whole collection here of mono tracks. So to rename that one, you'll need to have this turned on where you can actually read the file name and you'll find that under view regions name. See, if I turn that off, I can't see what these are. But if I have view, region, name, then I can see the track name. If I click on the track, it pulls up the track name dialog box. And now I'm going to change these to more standard um, track names. So I'll put an HH for the hi-hat. Now, there is a next button here, which you would hit to go to the next one. And then we'll type in kick X for the exterior kick. Now there's a keyboard shortcut in the rename dialog box where if you hold down command and hit the right arrow, you can increment through the tracks. Or if you hit the left arrow, you'll go backwards through the tracks. So that way you can leave this dialog open as you rename all these tracks. Command arrow. And here's the overhead left. So I'll use the abbreviation OHL. So overhead right command arrow and now we've got room L command arrow room right command arrow and this is not this is pretty um, this is snare bottom and you only have to do this part once because we're really just getting the track names set up correctly and now we're back to hi-hat so that's that's good now, if we want to drag in an additional part, I think it's best to do this in shuffle mode because shuffle mode will put your material right up against the edge of the previous material. And I think that works pretty well for this situation that we're using the original file tempos. Okay, so that was a verse. We're gonna grab a chorus part. Assuming that the naming is consistent, which it is with my library here, these will be in the same order. So you want to do the dragging before you rearrange these track orders so that you can get everything in here. I'm going to grab uh, this interlude part. Now note that this button here, which would enable elastic audio preview is off. If you have that on, it will enable elastic audio on all the tracks as you drag the first set in. And normally, I wouldn't want to start that way because I, I want to actually set this up using the unstretched audio. I want to use these drums at the original tempo. So if you wanted to extend one of these parts, you could use Command D and that will duplicate the part. And we're still going end to end, uh, you know, end to end on the regions because shuffle mode is on. I prefer to use the overheads and the room mics as stereo pairs. And I also don't like the track order here. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this into what I would say a more conventional track order. And we're going to put the kick at the top. So I select the track at the track header and I'm holding down shift to select the next one. And I just drag these to the top. And then we're going to want to grab the set of snares. And move those right up under the kicks. And then so we got kick, snare, hi-hat is there. And then uh, the set of toms 
I'll pick the first one, hold shift, pick the last one, and I'm going to drag this right up under the hi-hat. And then overhead and room is an order I like. I'm going to hit return and just audition this. Okay, that's good and loud. Now, one thing we haven't done in this project is put a master fader in and put in a stereo master fader. You pretty much need this in almost... Um, in almost any project is to put a master fader on so you can control the overall level. Put the master fader, drag that down to the end, and then using command equals to open the mixer. Now you can see I've got a complete multi-track mixer going. I'm going to loop this so we can do an initial set of adjustments on this. Um, and to set the loop, I'll just pick uh, a region here. In the transport panel, if you right click here and put loop on when you hit play, uh, we'll be looping. So I'll go back in here and um, just do an additional, uh, uh, I mean an initial mix. We'll do an initial mix. So the master fader allows us to um, set that up. Okay, I'm not going to do any changes yet because we need to uh, do a little bit of grouping here. Now this is an example of how to change uh, two mono tracks or left and right audio tracks into stereo tracks. So we're going to start with the overhead channels and then I'm going to create track new and I'm actually going to create two of these, two stereo audio tracks. And then one of these is going to be my overheads. This will be overheads left plus right. And the second one will be room left plus right. And I just selected all of the uh, regions in the room. And now if I take these mono tracks and drop them in the stereo track, it now sets up my stereo track. And then I'll take the, I'll do the same thing. I'm selecting the first and then I'm selecting the last region, holding down shift and I get the whole thing. And I'm going to drag this to my overhead track. And so now I've combined all of these into stereo tracks. And now at this point, I can delete these tracks. Or you could have hidden those tracks. And that's nice because we've achieved a couple things. One, display is a little bit less busy, but also it's easier to put the effects on. So if I'm back over here in the mixer view, um, I've got a much easier time here if I want to bring down the... Um, the overall room mic level or the overheads those are now on a nice stereo fader that's already nicely panned and if you wanted to insert a compressor up here on the room level it's just a nice way to handle it now we probably would follow up by creating some groups like we've got several kicks here we'd probably want to group these kicks and the snares and then run the entire drum uh, mix into an auxiliary input. So we've got that bus together in the context of a whole mix. We're not going to do that in this video, but I just thought it would be good to see the basic way that you quickly get started in setting up multi-track drums, looping, looping them out so you can build a song. We covered converting mono tracks to stereo and how to drag in multi-track drums, how to reorder and rename all the tracks and get your project uh, set up. So I hope you enjoyed this edition and go to um, www.lilacwriter.com and we'll talk to you again very soon.